These are 20 things only Apex OGs remember. The Mozambique once featured a unique animation where the character would angrily discard the Mozambique when swapping it for another weapon. This design was implemented during a period when the Mozambique was widely regarded as the worst weapon and then became a joke by the gaming community and the developers. B-Hop healing used to be a feature used by Sweats in the very early days of Apex. This overpower technique required you to run, slide, jump, followed by starting your heal and then spamming the jump button while slightly strafing to the left and right to fully keep your sprinting movement momentum as you're healing up. The muzzle flash in Apex Legends was once a significant issue, causing both your own and your enemy's muzzle flashes to engulf the entire screen during combat. One on this door. Yeah, I hit him with my nade. No armor tie. Jeez. One down. Muzzle, One piece out. Muzzle flash nice. is insane. Dude, you can't see crap in here. This resulted in chaotic fights where visibility was severely compromised. Originally implemented as a balance measure, players could mitigate the muzzle flash on their automatic weapons by equipping a golden stabilizer. The loot containers beneath the waterfall on Olympus once housed high-tier loot, almost ensuring the discovery of a golden item or weapon each time you landed there. Additionally, within the same match, you had the chance to secure guaranteed purple armor from these bins located just outside the northwest area of Skyhook. The graffiti mod, a hop-up, had an even more fleeting existence, being available for only a brief duration. It was introduced during the Always Be Closing Evolved game mode, offering a sneak peek at Season 6 and Rampart. The graffiti mod exclusively applied to the Spitfire, enhancing the magazine size by 15, reducing the reload time by 25, and introducing paint-loaded toggling between options using the select fire button. Some players creatively utilized this feature to paint various legends within the game. In the initial stages of the game, players found a way to exploit the jump tower, achieving virtually limitless flight. By gazing upward just before making contact with the ground, they entered a hover animation, and this maneuver could be repeatedly executed upon landing. Then you fucking boom. You don't let go right click, you just go. Loot bins and some other map objects could be punched to store momentum and then climbed on top of and walked off of to launch one across the map. In the past, players would enter the game without any initial gear, no armor, knockdown shield, helmet, or the two cells and syringes introduced in Season 9. Reflecting on this alteration, the impact was substantial, and imagining the game without this change today is challenging. But later, in Season 4, EVO armors were introduced. However, during this period, EVO armors remained distinct from the regular ones. This meant you could come across a white EVO armor or just a regular white armor, leading to a crowded loot pool and confusion confusion about which armor to prioritize. In retrospect, it's evident that Apex was experimenting with EVO armors alongside the traditional ones that were part of the game's inception. When the charge rifle was first introduced in Season 3, it operated on energy ammo and had a base magazine of four shots. It could also accommodate extended energy mags, allowing players to carry significant amounts of ammo and potentially have up to seven shots with a purple energy mag. Additionally, the reload speed was considerably faster compared to its current state. It's crazy to think about even these days dealing with the charge rifle is very annoying, but can you imagine what it would be like if it was still in its Season 3 form? In the past, having gold armor meant rapid healing, unlike the current state where cells and syringes healed double their amount. The swift healing provided by gold armor was exceptional and proved crucial in facing 1v3 situations. Imagining how impactful this would be if it were still part of the game today is truly fascinating. Before Lifeline's automatic resurrection ability with the shield was altered in Season 5, she had to manually revive teammates in her own unique animation. Despite this, she still retained her red shield during the process, creating opportunities for clever outplays, especially when baiting revives. In Season 5, Lifeline received the automatic revive with shield protection, a feature later modified in Season 9. In essence, Lifeline's revival capabilities have changed over time, and while she used to excel at reviving, she's not as potent in that aspect now. Many players fondly recall the good old days when Lifeline and a red shield were a formidable combination. There was a hop-up known as the Select Fire, compatible with both the Prowler and the Havoc. Its impact was more significant on the Prowler, transforming it into a fully automatic weapon instead of a burst fire one. 
On the Havoc, the Select Fire would allow you to charge it up for a single fire spray, although this modification wasn't as effective for the Havoc compared to the impressive transformation it brought to the Prowler. In the past, you had the ability to attach Arc Stars to your teammates, allowing them to engage an enemy and inflict damage without taking any harm themselves. What the heck? <laughs> this strategy popularized by professional players, particularly those using the Pathfinder due to its prevalent status in the meta, led to a nerf as it was frequently employed in tournaments. Wraith once possessed an instant ability that served as a convenient escape mechanism, an Apex get-out-of-jail-free card, so to speak. However, its effectiveness was limited by the shorter duration of invisibility compared to her current capabilities. Despite this, having an instant ability that allowed her to briefly go invisible for repositioning was quite advantageous in the earlier days of Apex. In the earlier seasons, not only did Pathfinder have a smaller hitbox, but he also enjoyed a fixed 15 second cooldown on his grapple. This cooldown remained constant irrespective of the quality or distance of the grapple. This factor significantly contributed to Pathfinder being a dominant meta pick during those initial seasons. There was a chance that opening a loot bin would simply just flat out kill you. <gasps> how, did a, how did a loot box kill me? I got killed, I got killed by a bin. Loot bin killed me. I'm PC players used to be able to reduce or even remove the muzzle flash. PC players were able to modify certain game files to make this change. The Apex Elite queue was a sweaty and more challenging game mode before Ranked was released. To get into the Elite queue, players had to finish in the top five of their public match. After that, they'd have to continue playing in the top five to stay in this Elite queue. Elite queue games wasn't just a fancy name for cool players. The ring closed faster and the ring damage was increased. As well, Apex players who stayed in the Elite queue for several games in a row gained a badge which actually shows how much of a top five streak you actually managed to get inside of these Elite queue lobbies. Bloodhound's tactical used to not show an enemy in real time when they got scanned, instead it would light up tracks and show a static ghost of where the enemy had been. We hope you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe.